Good morning and welcome to this Wednesday morning word and worship. I'm Greg Wilcox with Mission Integration. At least I am for another day or so. So, and I'm delighted that you've come to be part of this little devotion this morning. And for those of you who are tuning in online, welcome to you as well. Thanks to Mary for the prelude this morning. And I think Bill is back in the studio working the slides. I was very grateful and deeply moved by the little retirement devotions yesterday uh, for me. I had part of my family here and my little granddaughter, Ava, uh, was very wide-eyed at all of the proceedings and as she looked up at me, I could tell what she was thinking. She was thinking, I didn't know you were so important, Grandpa, and I have to admit, I didn't know that either but was grateful for the tributes and the variety of things that were shared on the little video. And then the many personal wishes and blessings and greetings and cards that I've gotten really has filled my head and heart full of uh, thanksgiving. So thanks to all of you, I am grateful. We are uh, continuing then our word and worship uh, services now into the fall in which we look at the gospel text for the upcoming Sunday. At least it's the gospel text, and I always share this little caveat. In many, many churches, not all Christian churches follow a common series of texts or, as they're called, pericope, but many do. I think the uh, Catholic and Protestant calendars for the gospel texts are maybe off by one week, but they follow a very similar schedule. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so uh, I'll read the text in just a minute. I do have a question for reflection, not for discussion so much. Who were the worst neighbors you ever had, and why were they the worst? And why were they the worst? You can just think to yourself. I know I has shared that when we moved into our lake place about eight or nine years ago now, the man who lived behind us uh, in this little area, his yard was full of old uh, pickups and broken down vehicles, and he has a nice deck that looks out over the back part of the lake, and he would often sit back there drinking beer and shooting his shotgun, which was kind of a scary combination for me. Luckily, he was shooting away from our cabin at least most of the time. <laughs> he was not a good neighbor. But then something dramatic happened. The cars began to disappear, and less and less he was out there drinking beer and shooting his shotgun, and his place was really shaping up. And I realized one day what had happened is he had fallen in love, and a woman had moved in, and she had taken over and was shaping him up. She made him a much better neighbor than he was before, and I'm grateful for her. I am really grateful. Well, the gospel text for today, uh, or for this coming Sunday, is from Matthew 21, verses 33 through 46. It's not about bad neighbors, uh, but I couldn't think of an exact equivalent. It's about bad tenants, bad tenants. And I will just talk a little bit about that, but mostly what I have for you today are a series of questions that I hope you will reflect on. But here is the gospel text. Jesus is coming close to the end of his life, and he is clashing more and more with uh, the Jewish leaders, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the Jewish priests, the head of the Jewish faith there in Palestine where he lived and worked and taught. And so he tells a series of little parables that have a very significant point for those Jewish leaders. This is Matthew 21, 33 and following. Listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. 
But the tenants seized his slaves and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again, he sent other slaves, more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, He will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the harvest time. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on the stone will be broken to pieces, and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. Well, he's telling that parable directly to the the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the priests, the Jewish leadership. And he's reflecting then the whole history of God's chosen people. And if you read the Old Testament, you see time and again that God has gifted the Jews with uh, wonderful uh, gifts, the life and the choosing and the promised land and all of God's law and love for them. And time and time again, God sends to them the prophets. These are the servants or slaves that Jesus pictures in that little parable. And the prophets are beaten and ill-treated and uh, have just a terrible time with God's people. Jesus recognizes that he is about to be treated the same way. He is the son in the parable, the son of the landowner. God has sent his son, and he is about to be himself ill-treated and crucified. As I wrestled with that, the question for me always is, so what? So what for us? Those of us who live and work in Good Sam or who are part of the Christian church or part of this faith these days, what does this little parable mean to us? And it struck me then that the question that Jesus ultimately is asking of the people of his day is, are you bearing fruit that reflects that you are kingdom people? And that's the question I want to ask for us today. Are we bearing fruit? As we live and work here in Good Sam and Sanford, what do our lives look like? What difference are we making? Do people who meet us along this journey recognize that we are kingdom people, that we are chosen by God, gifted with all of God's love for us in Jesus? Do people recognize that that makes a real difference in our lives? There just are a number of little questions that for me try to get at that ultimate question of are we bearing fruit as kingdom people? And so I just want to suggest those questions for your reflection this morning and for mine as well. Why do you work in Good Sam and Sanford? What's so special about this place and this people and how do you go about making Good Sam and Sanford a special place in which to work or in which to live or be served. How much can you get out of Good Samaritan or Sanford? And how much can you put into it? And do those two questions have anything to do with each other? What's God's will for you? Or given our little history and our founder, Dad Hager, do you ever ask, Lord, what would you have me do today? One of the interesting things for me at this stage in my career, my life, as people ask me now all the time, what are you going to do next? What does retirement look like? <clears throat> Excuse me, and the idea of golfing or gardening or doing yard work or sitting around or being at the beach, all of those have some attraction. But the haunting question is, you know, now that I'm leaving Good Sam, does it mean I can simply stop? being a pastor or being a Christian or trying to find ways to live out my faith? Well, no. So what will that look like as I leave this place? What will, will bearing fruit or living out my faith or being a kingdom person in retirement, what will that look like? 
What gives your life meaning these days? Is contentment getting everything you want? Or is it wanting everything you have? Who do you know who needs to be loved? And how can you go about loving them? For me, the heart of the kingdom question, or being a kingdom person, is loving needy people in our midst. What's most important in your life these days? Or who is most important in your life? Who has a story to tell that you haven't listened to, but could? What really makes you happy these days, and how often does that happen? If you were to die today, if I were to die, what would you most regret? That often gives me a little insight of what I should be prioritizing these days. Is there someone I, you, need to forgive? Is there someone I, you, need to ask for forgiveness? Well, ultimately, all of those questions, as I suggest, are really bound up, I think, with this little story Jesus tells. In the much larger question, in the much larger context of the kingdom of God, are you and I bearing the kind of fruit that God is looking and longing for in our lives these days? Amen. Amen. Off of our prayer list today, we're praying for uh, people in Bangladesh and Bassett, Nebraska. It's an interesting combo. Department of Allergy and Immunology, and those they serve. Uh, prayers for those who have lost a loved one or a friend. And our private prayer requests. Would you pray with me, please? Gracious God, by the power of your Spirit, Reveal to us the truth of this long-ago story that Jesus told to the Jewish leaders and what it might mean for us. Remind us that we too are chosen. We are kingdom people. Remind us of what you have given each of us in and through Jesus. Help us live out the gifts, the love, the mercy, the grace, the goodness, the richness of life that you have poured so freely into each of our lives. Help us to take all of that good stuff and find ways every day to give it freely away to those people we meet along this journey of life. Jesus, we pray for the people we've named, the folks in Bangladesh these days who continue to struggle in great poverty with all of the additional problems and pain that the pandemic has brought to that very impoverished country. We remember and pray for them, and the folks in Bassett, Nebraska as well. Those who serve in the Department of Allergy and Immunology, bless them today. Anyone who's lost a loved one, a friend, someone dear to them, comfort and care for them. All of our private prayer requests, Jesus, we lift and leave those before your gracious throne, and us too. We leave ourselves there and pray your blessing on us. In your name we pray. Amen. Thanks for coming this morning, folks. Have a great Wednesday.